Доброе время суток, дорогие и уважаемые дамы и господа. Сегодня я хочу дать вам возможность заглянуть в бездну и познакомиться с элементом абсолютного зла. Этим элементом является, о, точнее сказать, являлась штази. Это секретные службы, тайная полиция бывшей так называемой Германской Демократической Республики которая почила в Бозе в начале 90-х годов. Кстати, почему у меня тут флажок Латвии? Сегодня день независимости Латвии. Это страна, где я вырос и которая мне очень дорога. За которую я, в общем-то, если надо, готов даже умереть. Ну, ладно. Вообще-то мы сейчас говорим о Германии, так что я, наверное, поставлю германский флажок. Германия тоже одна из моих исторических родин. И за нее я тоже готов умереть потому что эта страна мне очень близка и дорога. Так вот, вы скажете, а при чем тут ГДР, который не существует уже больше 30 лет? При чем тут штази? Да при всем. Вот все мерзости, которые сегодня происходят в бывших западных странах, бывших демократических, бывших развитых странах, бывших богатых странах, происходят не без участия такой системы, как бывшая штази или подобным ей. Штази возглавлялась человеком по имени Маркус Вольф. Также в Германии его называли Миша Вольф, потому что он тесно связан с Россией. Был. Слава богу, сдох, мерзавец. Но он-то сдох, а созданная им сеть осталась. И к началу 90-х годов она как чудовищный спрут охватывала всю центральную, западную и северную Европу, а также Южную Африку, Намибию, Южноафриканскую республику, Ботсвану и, возможно, бывшую Родезию, Зимбабве уже в те времена. И, возможно, щупальцы тянулись даже в Северную Америку. Я просто этого не знаю. Про Европу и Африку я знаю. Знаю точно. Про Северную Америку нет, но, скорее всего, тоже да. Маркус Вольф создал фактически ОПГ, серьезнейшую организованную преступную группу. Потому что, как вы понимаете, такие люди, как Маркус Вольф и его подельники, естественно, не верили в такую идиотскую абракадабру, как социализм, коммунизм и прочее. Это сказки, это религиозное верование для глупых людей. Умные люди понимают, что никакой социализм и коммунизм просто не работают. Но эксплуатировать эксплуатировали эти верования. Кстати, я вам скажу, как человек, бывавший в Восточной Германии, жили-то они не так уж плохо. Даже по нынешним понятиям. Все у них было, что надо, и даже немножко больше. Только вот свободы не было. А это им не полагалось. Кроме того, жили они неплохо из-за того, что их подкармливал Советский Союз за счет денег, украденных у наших родителей и прародителей а также подкармливала западная Германия, чтобы поддержать более или менее достойный человек уровень жизни до того момента, когда они объединятся. Но это немножко в сторону. Маркус Вольф сам говорил, что его сеть никуда не делась. Да, господи, простейший пример. Ангела Меркель, бывший канцлер Федеративной Республики Германии. Отдельный разговор, как она попала туда, куда попала. И совершенно исключено, чтобы она не была членом штази и агентом КГБ заодно. А таких много, ох, как много. И эти люди активны, агрессивны, жадны и э, готовы делать все, что угодно, прежде всего для своего кармана. Ну и для своих хозяев, если они им платят. Они им платят. Э, конечно... В штазе попадали разные люди. Изначально попадали, может, и неплохие. Но система коверкает человека и переделывает его под себя. Особенно система, являющаяся абсолютным злом. Так что я хочу предложить вам фильм документальный, который снял не я, к сожалению. Ну, у меня нет ни возможности, ни времени такое снимать. Но я считал нужным сделать вот такое вступление. Фильм, извините, на английском языке. Я надеюсь, что вы по-английски худо-бедно понимаете. 
А если не понимаете, ну включите какие-то там субтитры, я не знаю. У меня есть еще лучший фильм на немецком языке, но немецкого почти вообще уже никто не знает. Так что я его даже и выкладывать не буду. Вот на этом пока все. Желаю вам хорошего вечера и не впадать в депрессию, потому что информированность и понимание, что надо быть на чеку, это уже само по себе оружие. Так что смотрите, мотайте на ус, делайте выводы. Пока! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I want to talk today about a individual you probably have never heard of. He is the Stasi spy master Marcus Wolf. He was the number two in charge of the Stasi throughout the Cold War, and he was so elusive that the West didn't even know what he looked like. His identity wasn't revealed until almost the 80s, and it was a different country's intelligence service that revealed it. Um, so I want to talk about him, though, because many people don't know that he was hired and brought in to consult uh, on DHS, the Department of Homeland Security that we have today. He was also brought in to the highest echelons of the FBI to teach the FBI. And so you need to understand a little bit about uh, Marcus, the man without a face. So let me uh, read to you a little bit um, about Marcus. I have a couple things I'm going to be reading from here and just adding my commentary on. I think that one of the important things to cover about this man is that for, he was never held accountable for any of the things that he did, for none of his crimes. Um, he basically got away with it, and I think that that's wrong. Uh, so I'm going to be reading here from an article about him, um, uh, calling him, you know, one of the architects of the New World Order who basically uh, has gotten away with his crimes. Uh, there has never been so little written or so little information provided about one of the most diabolical mentally sick and disturbing members of the human race as former East German Stasi chief and founder Marcus Wolf, who literally embodied the word evil in everything that he did or said during the decades of his acts of cruelty against not only his own people, but the rest of the world. That was pretty much, that was like his entire life. That's what his life was dedicated to. Even more disturbingly, this man, if you can call him that, pretty much got away scot-free with his crimes against humanity. And he was even hired by the fledgling DHS in 2003 to recreate and add the final finishing touches on this anti-freedom government agency that I would say is unconstitutional that was created in the wake of 9-11. The Stasi that Marcus Wolf helped to create and lead, plunge Germany into state-sanctioned violence, tyranny, oppression, uh, denial of things like basic civil rights and human rights. Um, they, the citizens of East Germany had no liberties, they didn't have any freedom, and he otherwise spied on and surveilled the entire population, essentially at the behest of the oligarchs and the plutocrats who were really the ones that were backing him and who were uh, clinging to power in the face of a growing uh, populist awareness. Um, there was kind of like a revolt growing amongst the masses. Uh, indeed, Marcus Wolf was by his own admission a deviant, <clears throat> if you know what that means, what kind of deviant, and a bully, similar to his own mentor and protege, who was um, the former uh, secret police chief for Stalin. Um, and he did horrible things to little girls as young as 12 years old that I am not going to discuss here in this uh, piece, but it was very disturbing. And he often incorporated both of these 
uh, parts of his personality in his grip of control over each and every aspect of his captive East German population, as well as on foreigners who dared to get involved with his daily trampling on the human rights of the people that he was ordered to corral and control on behalf of his paymasters. Um, indeed, while Marcus Wolf publicly espoused the values of things like austerity and living frugally, you know, the things that communists always say, but it's always for everybody else and not them. Um, th this is to brainwash the people that they rule over like despots uh, and privately they're all engaging in, you know, they're having orgies, they're uh, eating and drinking the finest foods and wines from other countries, they're using their power and their money to indulge in these things. They basically operate sort of like a mafia state. Uh, his entire life and career within the East German Stasi is a warning to the American people who could easily come under and fall prey to the ever-increasing and encroaching power of the U.S. police state being assembled and formed under their very own eyes unless the people wake up and understand what's going on and learn to study history. They are essentially trying to recreate this agency, the, the Stasi within the United States. Um, Marcus Wolf uh, was born uh, to a, a Jewish father and a non-Jewish mother. On January 19th, 1923, he was the founder in chief of the main directorate for recognizance, the foreign intelligence division of East German ministries for state security. Uh, he was the number two for 34 years spanning the Cold War. It is said Marcus was totally ruthless and he exploited any person's weakness with great precision and a total and utter lack of compassion. And that he uh, often said that, quote, no one who touched his intelligence service would be forgotten and no debt would ever be canceled. Marcus ran the East German Security Service uh, for most of the Cold War and was accused of countless acts of kidnapping, coercion, causing bodily harm, amongst uh, other myriad war crimes against humanity over the several decades that he was the Stasi chief. His father was a member of the Communist Party of Germany, and after a certain individual rose to power, Wolf and his family had uh, to escape. They had to flee, so they escaped to Soviet Communist Moscow with his father via Switzerland and France because of the communist connections they had uh, and their beliefs. In 1953, at the age of 30, Wolf was among the founding mem members of the East German Foreign Intelligence Service within the Ministry for State Security. He attended um, elite uh, Soviet schools in Moscow, by the way. As intelligence chief, he achieved great success in penetrating the government, political, and business circles of West Germany with spies predominantly using his target's deviant appetites, <laughs> penchant for vices, susceptibility to bribery, and if that didn't work, um, then they would, uh, they'd take off the velvet glove and bring out the iron fist, you know, and that was things like intimidation, physical violence, blackmail, extortion, to get the targets to do what he wanted. For most of his career, he was known as the man without a face, quote unquote, due to his elusiveness. But this was also because of the major oligarchs who actively protected his identity. And those are people who you don't know about their identity, just like you probably haven't heard of Marcus. It was reported that Western agencies didn't know what he looked like until 1978 when he was photographed by Sapo, Sweden's National Security Service, during a visit to Sweden. And that was, by the way, immediately uh, splashed uh, in the news just out of spite. They let it be known that they had identified him finally, which I think was a little silly. 
Wolf Stasi was an Orwellian police state using disturbing methods and murky operations. His Stasi carried out widespread repression of its own people through a network of tens of thousands of informers and quote unquote gang stalkers uh, using Zerzetsung program. Uh, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, you know, just like I'm not going to say Stasi and Wolf, you know, like we're not going to do the German pronunciations. Your girl is from South Florida, okay? But Zerzetsung means um, chemical decomposition or biodegradation, and it is targeted psychological degradation. Um, his Stasi also routinely harbored international tees, um, such as Carlos the Jackal, and uh, they also harbored the Red Army faction that terrorized West Germany as well as the PLO. Uh, through Marcus Wolf, the PLO was actually trained in hidden camps in East Germany in weapons, explosives, and guerrilla tactics. Um, in September of 1990, shortly before German reunification, Wolf fled the country and sought political asylum in Russia and Austria. When he was denied entry, he returned to Germany, where he was arrested uh, by the reunited German police for crimes against humanity. He claimed that he had turned down like a financial lucrative offer from the CIA if he spilled secrets and defected to the United States, which he, he didn't do. Uh, in 1993, he was convicted of treason in a kind of like a show trial that was just put on to appease uh, people. And then he, so he was sentenced to six years imprisonment, and then that was immediately quashed uh, by the German Supreme Court, and they said that, that they were quashing it because Wolf was, quote, acting from the territory of the then independent GDR. In 1997, he was convicted of unlawful detention, coercion, and bodily harm, and given a, quote, suspended sentence of two years imprisonment, which, of course, is a joke. Um, there was an article written, and we're going to read just a little quote from that, called Why Former Stasi is Treated with Kid Clubs, and it kind of explains why there was no accountability. Quote, Many former Stasi members are still in public office in Germany today. In fact, they're on the offensive when it comes to victims looking for recognition. Former Stasi officers include former guards of Angela Merkel. In 2009, it was revealed that approximately 70,000 current employees of the German government used to work for the Stasi. The GDR Secret Service has been partly responsible for over 200,000 political prisoners prisoners and about a thousand deaths of East Germans who tried to flee the GDR. Another explanation for the mild treatment of former Stasi after the fall of the wall is that it concerned uh, 91,000 Germans and hundreds of thousands of, quote, informal collaborators, informants essentially, who betrayed their friends, family, and neighbors to the Secret Service. This is the gang stalkings or Zetsung. If all of these people lost their positions, it would have led to major turmoil and dissatisfaction within German society. Victims of the GDR regime have difficulty stomaching the fact that former Stasi staff are still treated with kid gloves. For example, names of Stasi officers have been removed from public archives. In fact, parts of these archives are no longer freely accessible because of lawsuits filed by former Stasi members appealing to their privacy. Oh, they they get the right to privacy, but none of their victims did. Many associates of the past Secret Service have managed to have references to their past removed from books and exhibitions, unquote. Um, Marcus Wolf died in his sleep at his Berlin home November 9, 2006, rather than in a jail cell or uh, by firing squad like many of his victims probably numbering in hundreds of thousands, if not millions, during his lifetime and by his own hands. Now, I want to uh, just explain to people a little bit more about uh, Zerzetsung and what it is. Um, it, it was, uh, the goal was to kind of destroy the, the confidence of people, and they would do... Um, 
weird thing. So it, it means chemical decomposition or also biodegradation. So meaning if you just disappear somebody in the middle of the night, which of course they did do, but sometimes if that person was a was dissenting or whatever, or if it just wasn't convenient for them, they had other ways of neutralizing them that was less obvious. They would do things like damage their reputation. So they would do smear campaigns. They would have uh, gossip and rumors. It's sort of like fake news, what, what we call fake news today. They were doing this back then, but they would also do things like they would organize failures in their work. So they would arrange for you to like not get a promotion so that you would be stuck stagnant in your career and you wouldn't be able to afford to do anything. Um, they, you know, they, they would sort of just destroy your life in these, I guess you could call it passive aggressive ways in ways that you couldn't see. You didn't know that this outside force was working against you and arranging for these things to happen. Uh, they would go into um, your home at times. They would uh, move something around or move a few things around, rearrange things, but not take anything. So if you then tried to, you know, explain to somebody, hey, I think somebody broke into my house. Well, they go, well, did they take anything? Is anything missing? No, but things were rearranged. So it sounds crazy. Like, like, do you expect people to believe that someone broke into your house to rearrange your furniture and then just left? It sounds crazy. And the goal was to discredit them by making them seem uh, crazy like that. Um, they would uh, do things also like destroying uh, relationships, breaking up marriages, things like this. Um, and they knew that this was going on at the time. Uh, the, the East Germans knew that there was this network of informers and uh, things of that nature. Um, there is actually, I believe, a website um, of the same name that uh, explains what it is. Um, and there, so you can find some good information on it there. It's called uh, zerzetsung.org. So I highly recommend that. Um, also, Marcus Wolf, after he retired, he had his own successor. You know, he was the, the protege of Stalin's police chief. He had his own protege, Werner Grossman, who ran just as uh, damaging operations. And he just passed away in uh, 2022, two years ago. So there's probably a replacement now. Uh, that is um, just as bad, but uh, he helped to recruit 1,500 West German spies during the Cold War. Um, and again, keep in mind that uh, Wolf was brought in to consult on uh, the founding of DHS, not just him, but KGB General uh, Yevgeny Primakov was also uh, hired to consult. Um, allegedly. And keep in mind, too, that uh, Putin was foreign intelligence for the KGB and that uh, when the Berlin Wall fell, Putin was destroying papers. He was destroying files. And we know uh, from the archives that his, his Stasi ID has come out. So he worked with Stasi networks uh, back then. And the Stasi is still around today. Um, at one point, uh, at the, I believe, the height of their power, um, the Stasi had one in six people in East Germany acting as informants, which is an astounding number. And I just asked people to try to uh, visualize that. Now, um, there is a Time uh, magazine article from 2006 I want to bring up real quick and uh, we're going to wrap this up but it's called The Faceless Man Who Perfected Sex and Spying. Very, very relevant to today. This is from the uh, November 2006, the day after he passed away. He never repented, never saw the need to. Marcus Wolf was so clever a spy master that the fact he worked for East Germany, a repugnant regime that rightly disappeared into history's dustbin, never dented the massive ego that uh, drove his success. I would disagree with them there. No, they didn't disappear. Uh, many of them are went into the so-called reunified Germany, German government. The Stasi still operates out of Berlin. These old intelligence networks are still in place. 
Uh, a lot of them were not outed. Um, so, no. Uh, when he died Thursday at 83, quietly in his Berlin apartment on the 17th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, Wolf thought himself a victim of Victor's justice that had denied him the esteem he deserved, and he took countless secrets to his grave. Known as the man without a face for many years, Western agencies didn't have a photo of him. Wolf was a son of a German Jewish doctor and playwright, a communist who fled and ended up in Moscow. He attended elite party schools, party schools in the Soviet Union and was trained for undercover work. Uh, he returned to Germany as a journalist covering the Nuremberg trials, suspicious, and joined the East German spy service at its inception. In 1952, because of his Stalinism, he convinced Russian leaders of his loyalty. Uh, he became its chief and was brilliant at his job. Now, uh, let's see. Um, Wolf's foreign intelligence section of the Stasi... He claimed not to be involved in uh, organs of domestic repression that wasn't true, ran as many as 4,000 agents at the time. They penetrated the top ranks of business, government, parliament, military, and intelligence services in West Germany and beyond. Wolf had developed a particularly effective line in Romeo spies, so running these Romeo um operations handsome men who would befriend lonely secretaries that were working for senior officials and spy masters immensely patient he would carefully help direct his plants to jobs where they could be increasingly valuable uh, one romeo spy worked her way after a very long career into the office of the german chancellor helmut schmidt Wolf mused in retirement that, quote, if I go down in espionage history, it may well be for perfecting the use of sex and spying, unquote, which is just crazy. Um, now, also crazy, uh, he had said, even as my bitter foes would acknowledge, uh, his agency was, quote, probably the most efficient and effective such service on the European continent, I would tend to agree with him, even though, you know, he he's, uh, you know, bragging. He's, I believe he was telling the truth, and I think that more people need to be aware of this. Uh, okay, so one other thing I wanted to bring up was this article here from the Idaho Observer from February of 2005, ex-Stasi, quote, expert, consult with U.S. on homeland security. Is it true that an organization is a reflection of the people in it? If you were a benevolent president and wanted to keep your people safe, would you hire men who spent decades improving their ability to harm their own people? What kind of homeland security advice can we expect from the former director of the East German secret police? It was reported last December Former East German secret police director Marcus Wolf was being considered for the top post at the U.S. DHS. The rumor caused such a stir that the Bush administration chose Third Circuit Court of Appeals judge Michael Chertoff to replace the outgoing Tom Ridge as director. Wolf was at one time considered by DHS to be a T. Wolf, who'd been consulting with the department, is expected to continue in his capacity as a consultant for the federal agency charged with keeping Americans safe. Under the dictatorship of Wolf, the Stasi was one of the most ruthless police forces ever assembled. Uh, according to Wikipedia, in 1953, at the age of 30, Wolf was among the founding members of the Foreign Intelligence Service within the Ministry of East German Stasi. As intelligence chief, Wolf achieved great success penetrating the government, political, and business circles of West Germany with spies. The most influential case was that of Gunter uh, Gilleim that led to the fall of Chancellor Willy Brandt. Wolf retired in 86 as a reference. Wikipedia cites the book Memoirs of a Spy Master. Chertoff is credited with being instrumental in drafting the Patriot Act. Considered a classic Rockefeller Republican, Chertoff is not opposed to certain types of torture being used during interrogation of detainees. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Chertoff is a protege of Irving and William Crystal, neocons that are 
yes, that we're pushing the ever-expanding wars that never end, that are still ongoing even today. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much um, all I have, all I wanted to share with you guys. I just wanted you to be aware of Marcus Wolf if you weren't already. Um, and I wanted you guys to know that he was... <laughs> He was brought in to consult in DHS and that, and also he was brought in to, I believe, train FBI agents, which would explain a lot. Uh, anyways, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Were you, how much do you know about the Stasi, their repression tactics? Uh, Zerzet Sung, have you heard of Marcus Wolf before? Did you know anything about uh, him and have you studied any of this stuff? Um, anyways, that's it for today. Have a good day, guys. Whee!